Hello, folks. So um, I guess this is now part two uh, of my response to the non-lawyer as he did another response of his own. Um, so some of this, unfortunately, is going to be mildly redundant because I don't think he's actually answering the points that I made earlier. But um, we're going to go ahead and go through this. Of course, the radio, the gentleman that I made the base my Cal Rittenhouse video off of, he made a video about Cal Rittenhouse and it was in support of Cal Rittenhouse. I responded to that video, and I think that was a mistake, and I'll get into why. And, of course, he responded to my response to that video. So now this video is partly going to be in response to his response to me. So the reason I think this is a mistake on my part is because I don't want my videos to be controlled by someone else. And what I mean by that is that even though both parties may be respectful and they may be civil, you could end up in a situation where you're both responding after each other back and you're going back and forth and back and forth. For me, that's not something that I really want to do. I, I kind of want to do independent content. I kind of want to do content based on what I feel or I want to, I want to blog about, so I want to, vlog rather about things that I want to vlog about and I don't want to really get caught up into kind of uh, vlog wars if you will you know so this is going to be my last response to the radio's video and I think when I initially responded to his first video I thought the first video was extremely good in the way that it was organized, the amount of attention to detail that was put into it. I thought it was really good. I just thought that the some of the arguments were wrong, if you will. So now he's responded to my video and I'm just coming back and I'm gonna to respond to some of the things that he said. I'm not gonna make a super long video responding to every little thing that he said because I don't feel that I have to. And I don't think that I need to because, uh, you know, some of it really doesn't warrant a response. No, no disrespect to him, but I'm going to respond to some of it. So the first thing I'm going to respond. So, you know, you've been very uh, civil and I would encourage my viewers to continue to be civil. And I know some of them are not because there's a lot of emotional passions about this issue. But to be fair, you did come to my channel and post a link to your video response to my video. So that's why we're doing this. And I could understand why you wouldn't want to get involved in a back and forth. I've seen those sorts of things go on on YouTube forever, and it's not even really an effective way to exchange information. Um, I did invite you to come on my podcast and unfortunately got distracted by some things at home. Um, but I am still interested. If you're interested in coming on to talk about these topics, you know, I'd be more than willing to let you do that. But in the meantime, let's continue. It's fine. He, and no disrespect to him, absolutely no disrespect to him at all. And I'm going to respectfully say that he should probably reread that case. I read that case, right? And we're going to get into it in, in, in a minute. But first off, that case does not justify shooting an unarmed man. It doesn't. So let me just switch gears here and we'll get into the case. This case has nothing to do with the justification of the shooting of an armed, armed man. And the most important thing about this case I want to point out is that Watkins didn't necessarily win this case, right? It said That's actually not really relevant. So let me just take a moment and go over the case law that is the reason why we even brought that up. So the reason that that case law was relevant because um, was just me trying to answer to you the issue about pointing a firearm at somebody. It says, although, and this is under self-defense of and defense of others, Although intentionally pointing a firearm at another constitutes a violation of 9541.20, which is a misdemeanor um, offense, a person is privileged to point a gun at another person in self-defense if the person reasonably believes that the threat of force is necessary okay, to prevent or terminate what he or she reasonably believes to be an unlawful interference. What this means is it's legal to point a firearm at somebody if you feel you need to to defend yourself. That's what it means. And the case law 
is not going to be exactly identical in that regard to Kyle Rittenhouse. But what is relevant is that it has been established as a legal precedent that you are absolutely legally empowered to point a gun at somebody to prevent harm to yourself. Period. It's legal. That, that's what the case law is about. There is something else that's interesting that I think is actually going to hurt Kyle. And I'm going to point it out in another video, but I'm just going to read it here. Uh, What's well, going to be in this same video, but I want to show a video clip before I actually read it. It goes, the doctrine that when one is where he has a right to be and does not create a danger by his own wrongful conduct, he may stand his ground. If assailed by another, and in the case of his, of his uh, honestly and reasonably believing himself to be in imminent danger of losing his life or receiving some great bodily harm at the hands of such other, he may use such means as presently to him reasonably seem necessary to avert the impending danger even to taking the life of his assailant. This is interesting because I'm going to tell you up front that this section is about the common law rule of retreat. And I'm not actually going to address the common law rule of retreat. Well, that's good because the common law rule of retreat actually doesn't apply in Wisconsin. Um, it can look good for the person who's defending themselves, but there is no requirement to retreat in the state of Wisconsin to um, basically gain a self-defense defense. What I'm actually curious about is whether or not you have a right to self-defense in certain situations, right? So it basically says the doctrine that when one is where he has a right to be and does not create a danger by his own wrongful conduct. So let's think about this for a second. Had he said anything about the riots, uh, Wendy, that had gone on a few nights before? No one should have been at the riots. It's a horrible thing what happened. Mm -hmm. And it's just hard on everybody no one shouldn't have been there this should, i mean if they were going to protest they should have done it peacefully should kyle have been there wendy should kyle have been there wendy should kyle have been there wendy be honest so I don't even know why, again, you feel that's relevant, because it's not. Um, whether or not he should have been there is not just going to magically make him no longer able to defend himself. That, that is the point that you guys keep bringing up. So, and as I brought up in my previous video, and you never answered me about that, it doesn't just suddenly become legal to murder somebody because you believe they should or should not have been there for any moral reason. There is no legal reason he could not be there. Um, I've already basically defeated what you were talking about, about being licensed security professional. I don't even know why we're bringing that up again. But, you know, there's as far as like any moral ground for being there, nobody had any reason to be there, which is what Kyle's mother was bringing up. Whether Kyle or not should have been there, it doesn't matter. It doesn't become legal to murder somebody just because they should not have been there. But the problem with this is that he's bring he's introducing a gun into the protest. And I think in the other videos, I mentioned that he had all these strikes against him because of the doctrine of unclean hands. And there's also another legal maximum says that you can't take advantage of your own wrong. You can't use your own wrong as an excuse to get out of a crime problem in this situation is that he's bringing a gun to these protests and first off he's underage and he doesn't have a right to have a gun second he wasn't a part of the militia and we're going to get into why he wasn't a part of the militia later and then third he wasn't lawfully protecting property he didn't have a license to act as a security professional I've already destroyed that point. Which we're going to get into later. We're going to get into all those later. In that video, the, a judge is actually speaking. The judge is going to tactfully introduce this concept of whether or not Cal should have been there. 
And this is going to be important because when the prosecutors go to the jury, they're probably going to argue that he shouldn't shouldn't have been there. He had the right to be there, but he shouldn't have been there, and he damn sure shouldn't have been there with the gun. Trust me, this kid is going to lose. He's going to be he's going to lose for sure. 100%, he's going to lose. I still again don't understand why you think this is relevant because should Rosenbaum have been there committing arson, assaulting a minor? Should any of them have been there? This is the reason why it's irrelevant. Why would it only suddenly be relevant for one person as to whether or not he should have been there? That this, this is where they cancel each other out because it doesn't make any sense. And being in, like, you know, let's say that, okay, so what we have, you talked about the firearm. I've already mentioned that's a misdemeanor. Being in commission of a misdemeanor does not suddenly make it legal to murder you. This is the part that I don't, I can't seem to get through to you and people who are making this argument is that it really doesn't matter. Otherwise, it would be legal to kill anybody who should not have been there. That this is the basic rational point that I continue to make that never gets addressed. Is that just because he should not have been there does not suddenly make it legal for other people to assault or try to kill him. Answer for that. And it's going to become apparent why he's going to lose as we get later into, you know, this video. So let me just move on. And then it goes on to say, Miss Watkins did not have to introduce a gun to this event. Cal didn't have to introduce a gun to this event. And people are saying, well, what would have happened if Cal didn't have the gun? Well, you have to understand. Him bringing a gun does not make it legal for people to kill him. It doesn't. Him bringing a gun does not make it legal for people to attack him. This is the reason why some people draw the comparison of suggesting that this is like telling a rape victim that they should not have, you know, been in that, that neighborhood and worn those clothes. He, he doesn't just suddenly, it doesn't suddenly become legal to assault him because he has a gun. The chain of events that occurred happened because Cal had a gun. He was there with a gun and he was pissing people off, acting like he was in there, in there with some official capacity. Okay. <laughs> he was there with a gun and was pissing people off because he was acting as if he was there in an official capacity. So that makes it justified for them to beat him up or to try to kill him? How? What they were really pissed off about was that the militia group put out a fire that a group of arsonists had started. It's funny to me how the chronology of events in this situation always seems to begin with Kyle's participation in it without putting anything down as far as why the other people were there and what they were engaged in doing and what illegal activities they were engaged in doing, which is the reason that the militia and Kyle were there in response to what had already happened, which was rampant destruction of property. It, it again, it's this is, you know, a serious like logical failure here making the suggestion that the wrongdoing doesn't start until the people that you happen to politically disagree with get involved. That's why the change, chain of events occurred. Had Cal just appeared and he didn't have a gun and he was with the, he was against the people who were protesting. He just stayed with the people who were against the uh, protesters. Everything would have been fine. I don't think they would... Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. Y you don't know if he would have been fine or not. The disposition of the person who attacked him was violent. He initiated this. Kyle did not initiate this by showing up and giving people medical attention and happening to be armed. Joseph Rosenbaum initiated his part of the confrontation. Would have he would have drawn any attention without a gun. It would have never happened. At the most, what would have happened, in my opinion, is that there would have just been a fist fight and that would have been the end of it. Even why is that okay? You see, again, this is one of the reasons why when I'm arguing with people on the left about this, and I say this as somebody who's on the left, 
is the the notion that I don't think any of you would be satisfied with the outcome of this encounter short of Kyle, you know, not using his weapon and just letting the guy beat him to death. The, the, why is that an acceptable outcome? Even when Rosenbaum assaulted him, I think at the end of the day, there would have been a fist fight and that would have been, been the end of it. Well, that's really easy for you to say. You're not the one who's being attacked. And we're going to get into the issue as to what brings about the self-defense argument. Um, but it has to do with whether or not somebody could should reasonably believe that their life was in danger. And that's in all of the language for all of the statutes, which we've already read. Now, can someone kill you with their bare hands? Yeah, someone can. But for me, I don't really see that as a realistic possibility. It can happen, but the chances of, of something like that happen is like, you know, so far out there. It'd be like the chance of, you know, getting hit with lightning or something like that. That's my opinion. And the reason I say this is because I grew up and I was in a lot of fights as a kid. I was in a lot of fights in my teenage years. And... I, 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 I even took like a, a lot of, I was in, even involved in a lot of contact sports like, you know, Taekwondo and martial arts and things like that. And I just don't see how a person can, you know, kill you that easily. It's just not something that's realistic. And I'm not saying it can happen. Yeah, it can happen, but it's, it's not the norm. The norm is not for a guy to kill you with his bare hands. <laughs> so I guess you're submitting yourself as an expert witness because of your long experience of getting involved in brawls over the course of your life, but there's no reason for Kyle, especially when a gunshot was fired into the air behind him while somebody is actively pursuing him after initiating aggression against him, is to just turn around and expect that Joseph Rosenbaum just planned to hug it out. There's also absolutely no reason that Kyle Rittenhouse should have had to have endure, endured even a physical assault. Unless he's the Incredible Hulk or he's a werewolf or a vampire. In that case, yeah, shoot him. But if he's an Incredible Hulk, the bullets aren't going to kill him. They're just going to bounce off of him. You know, so shooting an unarmed man just doesn't make sense to me. It will never make sense to me. And Well, charging an armed man doesn't make any sense to me. I, I just can't, my conscience just won't allow me to accept that Cal should just get off because he was, he got into a fight. He was about to fight an honor a man and he chose to shoot him. Cal brought the gun to the protest. He didn't have to bring the gun to protest. He could have, and even if he did bring the gun to protest, he could have brought some bullets that, that basically would have, you know, like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, that there are certain bullets that you put in the gun that don't kill a person, like uh, bird pellets or something like that. He could have bought bullets that could have maimed instead of killing. And Joseph Rosenbaum could have not chosen to assault him for no reason. And Joshua Zeminski could have chosen not to fire a firearm into the air, which is what accelerated, you know, basically, I'm sorry, exasperated the problem and brought it up to the deadly proportions that it later evolved into. But for some reason, you're not in any way interested in the responsibility of any of the convicted felons involved in the situation, and all of the responsibility to you lies with the person who happened to be standing there in opposition to rioters and looters. Right. Or he could have bought pepper spray. Or he could have bought uh, mace. He could have brought mace to the event. He could have brought anything to the event, but he chose to bring a gun. And when he brought that gun, he specifically says, we don't have non-lethal. And I'm not taking that out of context. No, you are absolutely taking that out of context, which is what I proved by playing the clip, was that there was a journalist asking him why they were there, and Kyle explained that they were there to protect the citizens and that he had just been pepper sprayed by somebody in the crowd. And then the journalist said to him, so you had non-lethal, but you chose not to respond. And so to which Kyle replied, we don't have non-lethal. 
So he didn't do anything about it when somebody sprayed him with pepper spray. That, that's the context. That's the context, period. He explained why he didn't do anything to the person who sprayed him with pepper spray. He's basically saying, if I get into a fight, I'm going to kill a guy. That's what he's saying. I'm not saying that he's running around shooting into crowds. I'm not saying he's running around sniping innocent uh, protests. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that he didn't bring mace, right? If somebody attacks him, he sprays him in the face with mace. He didn't bring, uh, you know, maybe a bat or something like that. If somebody attacks him, he beats him with a bat. No, he, he brought a gun. And he intended to kill whoever he got in confrontation with. And we know that because of his statements. We don't have non-lethal. There's plenty of things that he could have brought. There's also plenty of other things that the protesters involved could have done, which would have included not attacking him. But again, suggesting and clarifying that the reason that why they didn't do any kind of response when being pepper sprayed was because they didn't have any non-lethal options, again, is not in any way evidence that he had the intention to kill anybody. And you're talking about what if he hadn't done this or what if he hadn't done that? If Joseph Rosenbaum had not chosen to stalk Kyle Rittenhouse two blocks to try to find him and ambush him elsewhere, along with his accomplice, Joshua Zeminski, none of this would have happened. None of this would have happened. So let's get back, first of all, to the core issue of when somebody can defend themselves. According to it, this part of the code here for Wisconsin law, a person is privileged to threaten or intentionally use force against another, per uh, another for the purpose of preventing or terminating what the person reasonably believes to be an unlawful interference with his or her person by such other person. The actor may intentionally use only such force or threat thereof as the actor reasonably believes is necessary to prevent a termin or terminate the interference. The actor may not intentionally use force which is intended or likely to cause death or great bodily harm unless the actor reasonably believes that such force is necessary to prevent imminent death or great bodily harm to himself or herself. So if you reasonably believe that your life is in jeopardy, which is one of the reasons I pointed out in the other video that um, self-defense experts when it comes to gun use will frequently tell you that one of the most commonly repeated phrases um, during the course of successful self-defense cases is the witness in question stating that I feared for my life. So what reasons would Kyle Rittenhouse have to reasonably fear for his life? Well, we could start with the fact that Joseph Rosenbaum threatened him earlier in the evening. Now, I just added this thanks to the uh, input of some of my viewers. Um, these are taken from another channel, and I'll credit that channel in my description, but and it actually says here from the Discuss channel. And this kind of fills in some of the holes as far as to what took place between Kyle Rittenhouse and Rosenbaum uh, that is not accounted for in any of the video. Um, we went into the... Uh into the crowd and started asking around, seeing if anybody was hurt. And there were a couple of people that were hurt, you know, applied first aid. And uh, we was a gas station, which is in the center of where all this happened. Uh, me and Kyle, Kyle was kind of like tagging along with me through that. And we got up in a crowd and, you know, the first victim and somebody else stopped us and started yelling at us. And that's not the video that everybody says is the video because that wasn't caught on camera. But uh, he made threats and we were just like, hey, dude, we're just chill out, man. It'd be cool. And, you know, he reinstated his threat and we're like, whatever. And then me and Kyle started walking off again and somebody else came up and started yelling at us and then he walked off and 
got separated and so but so the oh, yeah. the first uh victim of the shootings um he he was he made threats that were not on camera correct and then uh, what what do you remember what he was even threatening um he seemed to have a problem with the folks that were out there guarding the businesses and whatnot. Right. Um, you know, we saw that, that exchange between him and another guy earlier in the night where he was, you know, telling him to shoot him. Yeah. And with me and Kyle, it was, if I catch one of you along, you're dead. So he, he definitely. So that's a direct threat to somebody's life which is actually prosecutable in many states as um, a crime unto itself. So that certainly plays into the reasonable belief that it would be necessary for him to defend himself um, with serious force, essentially, if that person was to attack him later. The next reason why it would be important to consider that Kyle could have reasonably felt that he was in danger has to do with how the initial confrontation took place. Once again, reminding you and the audience that this confrontation took place entirely because of Rosenbaum and Zeminski and his wife actively going out of their way to have this encounter with him. They initiated the confrontation. And then, as the confrontation started, Kyle tried to escape. This is the part that I, again, it's, it's I don't understand why you guys can't fathom this, but as, as difficult as this is going to be for some of you to accept, Kyle Rittenhouse is the victim. They attacked him. They initiated these actions on him. He did not initiate these actions on himself. They attacked him him they chose to engage with him if they had not peter just went about his business regardless getting back to the point when rosenbaum began his chase as is seen in the video multiple times um josh zeminski which you have acknowledged in your own replies and certain comments um is the one who fired off a gunshot now as soon as a gunshot is fired into the air, we're moving into reasonably believes it is necessary. He doesn't know who shot at him. And he doesn't have to not know that Rosenbaum, you know, he doesn't have to know that Rosenbaum is not the one who shot at him. He does, you know, and he also could have believed that he was under the atta under attack by multiple people as they moved on him initially together. So as soon as another firearm was fired off into the air, and there was somebody who chose, you know, who was charging at him at the moment and grabbing for his gun, he had every reason to believe reasonably that his life was in jeopardy. And I did a good video analysis breaking this down as far as to what the role was of Josh Zeminski in starting this entire encounter. So now I'm going to use two different clips of people analyzing that first shot again. And some of this is, again, redundant, but... The reason I'm showing it again is because the importance of Alex Blaine, you know, alias Josh Zeminski's role in this situation um, is, has been understated, and that is he fired the first shot. He's the one who irresponsibly used a firearm that led to everything else, the chain reaction of events that moved on afterwards. He's the one who escalated it to that point, and I'll let the two people who analyzed this you know, kind of take it further. Yeah, that's Antifa, man. Oh, he got a gun, baby. Oh, he shot him. Now I'm going to slow it down to point out a very curious thing. Notice how everyone in this frame runs after hearing the first gunshot. But both of these people, a tall man and a shorter figure walking together, have a casual, nonchalant gait. 
Alex Blaine, Ashley Kruger. Even after the next blast of gunfire, they continue to saunter as normal. This reveals that the gunshot in the air was not a spontaneous thing, but a strategic behavior of some kind. The chaos that erupts after fails to disturb them. It's that first gunshot that begins to take this encounter into fatal proportions. Fleeing from his assailant, Rittenhouse hears this close-range gunshot and knows he can't run away from a bullet. This is actually from the police report. With his back to the shot, he's thinking they're shooting at him. And even though we know they aren't, we also know that there are nefarious motives afoot. And there was no reason why Kyle would have known that he was not being fired on. And because of the fact that whether or not he actually was being fired on is not relevant, he only has to reasonably believe that he's being fired on, which he would have had every reason to believe that. He is allowed to defend himself at that point. Period. So, by the way, side issue. Um, you said that these people shouldn't defend their businesses because they all have insurance. And I noticed that you didn't play, actually, the parts of the video that of the last one that I used that pointed out that, in fact, many of these places are not actually covered by insurance and that domestic terrorism is not covered by many insurance plans. Um, here's more evidence to that fact. insurance told you they're not going to cover the damages absolutely what do they tell you <clears throat> they don't cover the riots this is domestic terrorism don't cover it and what did you say i'm screwed i'm bankrupt i hope to god best regards that hopefully no one goes through what i had to deal with no one even my enemies i hope no no one goes through this at all man because it's it's not bearable. It's not. It's not bearable at all. It hurts. So, some parting thoughts. It's important to understand that the biggest issue that I have with the arguments that are presented is that you guys seem to think that... Feel that they're right. You know, that... um. Basically, Kyle Rittenhouse doesn't have a right to defend himself, in your view, because he should not have been there. And if you are saying that somebody does not have the right to defend themselves, then you're also saying that anybody who takes a mind to doing him harm is therefore legally permitted to do so. I'm going to say that again. What you're suggesting is, if he's not allowed to be there, then he's not allowed to defend himself if somebody chooses to attack him. If that's the case, the precedent that you would be suggesting, again, would be that anybody who should not be somewhere is therefore not by law allowed to protect themselves if they're attacked. That logic, I don't think you guys even realize the full implications of how flawed it is, but since Joseph Rosenbaum should not have been there, I guess that means it's okay for Kyle to shoot him. Um, same thing with Anthony Huber. You know, none of them we're supposed to be there. That's why I'm saying that that logic, and if that's what you're relying on, and, and that's your your shtick, um, I hope you can find something better, because that just doesn't make any sense. You don't forfeit your right to protect yourself just because you're doing something else that perhaps you should not be doing, or that is not advisable to be doing. Thank you. <laughs>